So I feel like out of the box, NCM PCPP looks genuinely ugly. I don't know why anyone would run it like this. It just doesn't have anything redeemable about it. So today I'm going to show you how to take it from looking like this to looking a little bit better. Now, you might disagree with whether this looks amazing or not, but I personally think this theme looks considerably better than it does out of the box. So the biggest difference you'll notice is that out of the box, NCM PCP actually comes with two different interfaces. We have the classic interface and we have the alternative interface. So I'm not a big fan of the classic interface, so I've gone and switched over to user face underscore equals alternative. Now I'll show you what it looks like if I switch back to classic. Now classic and alternative do actually make use of different settings. So if you go and set the alternative settings, then you're not going to have all of the same classic settings set as well. So this still looks better than it did before, but I like actually having the name along the top rather than having the name along the bottom like we see down here. So I'm going to switch back to that one and reopen that. And we've got it like this. Now in the default config, colors enabled is set to yes, but make sure that it is. Otherwise, we're not going to have any color in the application at all. And that's pretty obvious to notice. So from here, what we can do is go and actually set the colors of the different components in the window here. So the main window is going to be this window down here. And the header window is going to be this window up here. So anywhere where you don't actually specify a color, whatever color you've gone and set in these two are the color that's going to be used. So say we go and change this one from being white, for example, and we go and change this to being red. Now, all of the text in here that doesn't have a color is now actually going to be red. And likewise, if we go and change this one to say magenta, anywhere that didn't actually have a color set that was cyan in the top window is now going to be set to magenta. Just go and set these colors that make sense as fallback colors just in case you don't go and set anything you like. And then the progress bar color is going to be the color of the bar down the bottom here for anything that hasn't been passed yet. And then the progress bar elapsed is obviously going to be the other side of the bar. Volume color is fairly self-explanatory, but the status bar color is basically the color of the text that shows up down the bottom here. So whenever you write a command in here or it shows some information down the bottom, that's going to be the status bar color. Now, there's two ways to customize the playlist view here. So I'm actually not using the default playlist view. I've actually got it set to columns and everywhere that I can use columns, I'm going to set it. So in that case, I've got it on my search engine screen. So if I say search for something like uh, Kali, it's going to actually show me the exact same list. And if I show it on, say, my second screen here that shows my files here, it's the exact same view. So I'd recommend setting everything to the exact same view just so you have a consistent look across the application. So I'm using the columns view. So we're going to be messing with this variable right here. But if you want to use the list view, I'll tell you about that one in just a moment. So in this one, what you do is actually go and specify how much space you want to be used by the different components inside of the actual columns. So in this case, this component is using 10%, this one is using 30, this is 30, and this is 30 here. And in square brackets, you go and specify the color. So this first element, I've got set to blue. This second one, I've got set to green, third magenta, fourth yellow. And then in the curly braces, you're actually going to find what you want to show in that spot. So L means the length of the song, T means the title, a means the artist, and then B means the album. You can go find a full list of these inside of the man page. Now let's go and switch over to the classic playlist so I can show you what that one actually looks like. So set my playlist underscore display mode to classic, and then restart NCM PCPP, and my playlist looks a little bit like this. So the way that we go and configure this is with the song underscore list underscore format, and as you can see, the format for this is a little bit different. So we take in some curly braces and a curly brace basically defines a block. So this is a block, this is a block, this is a block, so on and so forth. Now, what the bar means is if there's data missing on the left-hand side, then show what's on the right-hand side. So in this case, if the title is missing, then show the file names. As you can see, the letters still line up with what we had before. So T is still title, uh, L is still the length, so on and so forth. So all that's different there is you just have a percentage sign behind them instead. So we can go find a full list of those right here. I'm not going to go through all of those, but you can have a read through these if you want to. And there is a special format in here as well, and that is $R. So $R basically means begin right alignment. So everything after this point here is going to be right aligned for the rest of the line. So in this case, that's going to be the album and the length. And as we can see, album and length. So the rest of the numbers we see in here, so $7, $9, $5, $9, $5, $9, $6, $9, 
what those basically define are colors. So let's actually have a look at those. So as we can see, $6 is magenta, $7 is cyan, $5 is blue. And then $9 is a special one. That basically means end the current color and then go back to the fallback color. So this is just so you don't end up overriding colors and things like that. It's always good to end whatever your previous color was and then start up your next one. But colors can actually be nested inside of each other. So you could do something like, say, start up color 7, then start up, say, color 6, without actually ending the first one, but then make sure you're actually ending your colors correctly. Now, one thing to note about pipes is they're only treated as special characters if they're not inside a set of curly braces. So if we did something like, say, put a pipe here, put a pipe here, these are just going to be treated as regular sort of characters. So as we can see, before and after the song name, we actually have pipes now. Now, I definitely would recommend going and using pipes to set up a fallback, at least for the title, because if you say go and download some random music off the internet, like say, for example, Stream Beats, it doesn't actually have any of the metadata set in it. And if you don't have the metadata there and you're just relying on the title, it's going to be a big empty line. You're going to have no idea what the song actually is. So at least until you go and set your metadata, make sure you have the file fallback here. Now, moving on from the playlist, let's talk a bit about the header. So, out of the box, alternative modes header does not look like this. So, what I've gone and done is set the alternative header first line format and alternative header second line format. So, let's go and just disable those and I'll show you what they actually look like. So, this is what it looks like out of the box. It's not terrible, but it can definitely be made to look a little bit better. So, let's go and re-enable those. And the first thing that you're probably going to notice is these little bars off to the side here. So those are done with a special bit of formatting that isn't mentioned anywhere in the documentation. And those are $AQQU $A for the left hand side. And then $ATQQ $A for the right hand side. This part is just resetting the color. Don't worry about this. It's not actually important. Same with this one. This is just resetting the color to the background color. We don't actually need this part either. So if we go and restart this, as we can see, it's the exact same. Anyway. I don't know where anyone actually found these because I can't find any mention of them in the entire NCM PCP documentation, but I found them in someone else's config and I think they look pretty cool. As for the rest of the line, this is formatted in the exact same way as your song list format, so as long as you understand how that works, you're going to understand how this works exactly the same as well. Now as for the second line, that is basically the line directly under it. So let's go and switch to a song where I'm actually using all of the information. So let's say Deadbeats. As we can see, we have the name of the album, and then we also have inside of square brackets the year it was released. So these square brackets in here don't actually have any special meaning, they're just interpreted as square brackets. Now if you do happen to like the classic interface and you want to modify that line that appears down the bottom that shows the song name, that is done with the song underscore status underscore format, and the formatting for this is exactly the same as the ones we've seen before. Now I would recommend having a space before and after it, Otherwise, when the song wraps around, the end of the song and the start of the song name are actually going to be touching. So speaking of down the bottom here, we have the progress bar. So this can be modified with the progress bar underscore look. So this takes in exactly three values. If you try to put in a fourth value, it is going to crash. So make sure that you only have three values in here. So what we have is where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going. So in this case, I've got an equal sign behind me. I've got a greater than sign for where I'm at, and then where I'm going is going to be a dash. So we can go and set this to something like, say, an O, and if we go and change this, so let's restart this, give it a second. As we're going to see in just a moment, it's now going to be a line of O's. So you could make this something like Pac-Man if you wanted to, or you could have it be like an arrow is going across the line. Another thing worth modifying is the current item prefix and current item suffix. Now, my suggestion is have this form in here. You can make some slight adjustments to it. So you could add something like a pipe to it, and then when you actually go and highlight something, it's going to have a pipe before the thing you have highlighted. But make sure you have $R in here, because if you don't, it's not actually going to use the colors that you have selected here to actually highlight the line. And the same is true for this. Make sure this is here as well, because otherwise the highlighting won't actually work. Now, what the dollar blue means in this case, and this part you actually can modify, is what color to use for lines that don't actually have a color defined. So anything that's going to be using the fallback color. In my case, I'm just using blue. So if we go over to, say, my second screen, all of these are going to be highlighted blue. But if I say, go and replace this with red, and we get rid of this pipe here, as we're going to see... Now any of those are highlighted with red, and the same is going to be true on this screen and this screen as well. 
Now, as for the inactive column prefix, it's basically doing the exact same thing as the current item prefix, but this is going to be used on any screens that actually have multiple columns. So as we can see, the column I have selected, the selected item is red, and then for any that I don't have selected, the selected item is cyan. Two other things that sort of go together are the now playing prefix and the selected item prefix. So the now playing prefix basically is a little symbol that shows whichever song you're currently playing. In my case, I've got that set to a greater than sign and then a space. If you don't have the space there, as we're going to see, it's going to basically have the greater than sign touching the number. And I think that looks a little bit weird. So just stick a space in there and it looks a bit better. The other one is the selected item prefix. This is basically going to show for any items that you have currently selected. So in this case, let's say we want to select this one here and this one here and this one here. And as you can see, it puts an asterisk before that. Now, the other thing I've gone and done with that is discard underscore colors if item underscore is underscore selected. That's a really terrible name, but what it does is basically just gets rid of all the colors if you select the item. The last thing I want to do is show you how to configure the visualizer. I'm not going to show you how to set it up today because I did that in my original NCM PCPP video. But if we want to go and set the type, that is basically whichever type it's going to be set to by default. So in this case, it's set to spectrum, but we can go and switch this to something like ellipse. This would just be called ellipse over here as well. This one is wave. This one is wave dash field or wave underscore field. Just check the main page for that one and then back to spectrum. Now, the other thing we have is visualizer in stereo. So this is whether to actually show both of the audio channels. So if we go and set this one to no and have another look at the visualizer, as we can see, it's just along the bottom. I'm not a big fan of this look. If I'm going to have a visualizer, I'm going to go all the way with the visualizer. And the other thing is what the visualizer looks like. So like with the progress bar look, the visualizer look takes in two values as well. So the first one is going to be used on the sound ellipse and also the sound wave. And then the second one is going to be used on the sound wave field and the frequency spectrum. So in this case, I'm using this like diamond symbol and then this bar for the other one. But you could use any symbols that you want. Now, this isn't everything you can configure with NCM PCPP, especially when you go outside of the visual configuration. But if you want to have it looking like mine does or you want to build on top of what I do, this is probably going to give you a decent enough baseline to go and do so. And afterwards, I'd recommend going and reading the man page and seeing everything else you can actually do, even though there are actually a lot of things missing from the man pages. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, Montada, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Road, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 patrons. If you want to go and support my work in the links down below to my Patreon, leave a page, subscribe, start, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.